Phil Hewlett from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. A strike by trash workers continues in Orange County. About a million Republic Services customers are seeing and smelling rotting garbage stacking up. It's been doing so for days. The mask mandate is back. California's top health official, Dr. Mark Daly, announced the state is instituting a universal indoor mask mandate that starts Wednesday and ends January 15. He says it's the best way to avoid a holiday surge of COVID-19. A couple of electric vehicles that are not even available to drive yet have received top honors. The Rivian R1T pickup is Motor Trend's truck of the year. The Lucid Air is car of the year. Rivian is based in Orange County. Lucid in the Bay Area. South Island weather from KFI. Rain, wind, and dangerous surf. About a 100% chance of showers today. Wind gusts to 45 miles per hour at the beach. 10-foot sets and strong rip currents. Right now, 52 in Buena Park. Irvine 55, Santa Monica 53, and in Silmar, it's 41 degrees. We leave local from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. I'm Phil Hewlett. In Glendale, this is on the 5 northbound at the 134. Clean up crews from an earlier crash. Take it up the two right lanes. Watch for some stop-and-go traffic from Zoo Drive. And in Santa Clarita, this is on the 14 southbound at Sand Canyon. Clean up crews from an earlier crash there. That'll take it up the carpool lane. Watch for delays as you approach. Westminster, this is on the 405 northbound at Golden West. We have a crash and emergency crew. Take it up the right lane there. You drive as punching up as you approach. KFI and the sky helps get you there faster. I'm Brian Van. I can turn my passion into a career. I can get hands-on training for my dream job. I can be ready for the in-demand careers of today and tomorrow. Learn by collaborating and exploring when you enroll at a California community college. With more than 200 career education programs at your fingertips, your future can be anything you imagine. I can make good money doing what I love. Classes can fill up quickly, so enroll today at ICanGoToCollege.com. IQ Air wants to give you the cleanest air possible, and the affordable Autumn Series does just that. The Autumn Desk is a revolutionary air purifier that transforms your workspace into personal clean air zones. Unlike other air filtration systems that may take hours to purify the air, the Autumn Desk begins working immediately. Put it right next to you while you work and create your own personal bubble of ultra-pure air. This game-changing technology has been proven to remove 99% of all airborne pollutants. Visit iqair.com slash us to learn more. Give them a call, 800-500-4AIR, 800-500-4AIR. 4247. If you're thinking about refinancing your home, or even if you've already refined it, it's more than worthwhile to contact HMS Capital. Mark Heiss of HMS Capital recommends you apply with his company, of course, and with any competitor at the same time. He is that confident he can get you the best deal. And I've known Mark for over 16 years, and I've done two mortgages with him. So I have no problem recommending HMS Capital. No appraisal or application fees of any kind. There's the HMS Challenge. Apply with another mortgage company and with HMS Capital. Call 833-255-5698. 833-255-5698. Interest rates still ridiculously low. Visit hmscapital.com. hmscapital.com. I learn something new from you guys every day. For all you people who think you don't learn something from this show every day, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. With Gary and Jerry, weekdays at 10 a.m. on KFI. You buy a, you, you just scratch off, so you don't, you don't strike me as a woman who's in there scratching off with her coffee and her donut every morning. It's not any kind of a show. Weekdays at 6 on KFI. Yeah. 
T-A-R-N-I-V-O-R-A.com. Call today. Is the term home loan the right fit for you? Your historic low rates may be a great reason to refinance, but when matched with an expertly chosen loan from Loan Depot, you could be saving money and paying more towards the bottom line. Call a Loan Depot loan officer and ask about our 27-year smart term loan or our 10-year arm loan. Get a great rate matched with a great loan by calling 866-888-LOAN or visit LoanDepot.com. At Loan Depot, home. And welcome back to Coast to Coast, George Dory with you, Bridget Sinclair with us. We're talking about her incredible work as a spiritual teacher. And Bridget, we were talking about evil. Is evil also created? I mean, if you have a child and this child is beaten and abused, there's a high likelihood that child is going to turn out to be evil. Either do it with his or her own children, or turn into a serial killer or something. So can't evil be created from innocence? Yeah, um, I think it's a really yeah. so. basic, complex understanding of all these things. Yeah. It is absolutely someone who with things trauma mm -hmm. after trauma and times after times and been beaten and has themselves do mm -hmm. evil things. Um, but then we also have people who survive that kind of childhood and go on to do incredible things and do the opposite and go into philanthropy and into helping other people who do the Sure. So it's not as clear cut as we might think. And do you know what? It's interesting. It goes back to consciousness. And I think it goes back into the consciousness that that soul came in with. And are they strong enough to overcome that? those adversaries and come through that and do good or do they go the other way and that path of either going down that path of becoming evil and perpetrating those kinds or overcoming it coming through it and helping others is this kind of spiral to that there's an upward spiral of consciousness of spiritual enlightenment and growth and there's a downward spiral of going into that evil so yes for sure it can be created but but Behind all of that, the structure, the way that our universe is created, the structure of the forces, the energies in this universe, mean that there are always these two pathways that can be taken, which is actually happening at the subatomic level. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we were talking earlier about the fall, and then the, the Adam and Eve, and, and then they speak of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, as opposed to the tree of life. So the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil suggests we're in that tree, uh, in terms of a Kabbalistic tree. So there is always the devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other. There's always this choice in every moment, in every person, to either take that upward spiral of good or the downward spiral of evil. And it's because of the structure that we're living in. It's, it's wide open to influence us to go down that um, oh, path of evil. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, it's yeah. true that the, the, the sins of the Father are visited upon the Son. It's the it, expression that uh, things do go down partly genetically and partly so partly nature, but part, mostly nurture as well. What happens to us, the things that happen to us, shape us and form us. And yes, so we live in this duality, and it, that evil is always present, and evil begets more evil. So yes, it can be created. But I don't think it's as clear cut as we sometimes like to think it is. Bridget, we have a guest whose name is Professor Joseph Gallenberger, and he has written a book called Liquid Luck. And he contends, and I'll tell you what he has done to back up his thoughts, that attitude and kindness will show incredible things, as opposed to being upset, put a cloud over your head, and being, you know, mean about things. So what he does, he takes two groups of people to Las Vegas. Up-tempo people, happy people, friendly people, giving people, and then he has another group where they're mean, they're upset, you know, they're, they're angry with life, and his, his contention is that almost all the time, the happier crowd ends up winning in Las Vegas 
I do. As opposed to the people I who are do. evil. Now he uses Las Vegas because he says it's the easiest way for him to see how this works. And it's, it's strange, but it works apparently. Because at any moment, it, what you're focused on, are you focused on the good things in life, the things that are allowing you to be giving and loving and friendly and kind and have that kind of positive attitude, no matter what's playing out in our life? Because everybody has um, challenges in their life. Or are you focused on all the things that have gone wrong and how annoyed you are and how resentful you are? And whatever you're, that's a different vibration. So you can bring vibrations into consciousness as well. So depression and grief and anger and fear, when you vibration at a very low vibration, uh, joy and kindness and love and giving and friendliness and being up tempo vibrating on a much much higher vibration now which bear in mind everything is vibration everything is a field you know that it's the quantum field that creates matter and your mind and your attitude and what you think and what you say and what you do is constantly affecting that field and it's constantly showing up in your reality and in fact, I go into this in a simple way in my novel, Red Dress, with the character. It's a fun read, by the way, but the character is um, having a conversation with a wise voice. So she's telling her, look, what you're focused on, what you're focusing on is what you create. And that's really a primary job for the work that I do in the bone structure, which is teaching people how to focus on, um, being extremely focused on the higher vibrational things that they want that bring them joy, that bring them bring them um, happiness, that bring them fulfillment. But often the damage or the wounding that's been done to what I would call our small stuff actually stands in the way of sabotaging us. So it's not something where you can go, well I'm feeling really resentful and mean about something, but I'm going to just keep trying to be positive because that's not how the mind, the subconscious mind works. It turns on to that life right, until you do it, build it, build it, brought it to life. Which is why I say, although I don't work as a therapist anymore, all of those yearnings and understandings and cravings and experience still come into play when I'm teaching because I'm, I'm aware that to live, to, to live our best life and to have a beautiful future, we have to be aware of it. We have to vision yeah. the future, but we also have to heal these parts and let go of the trauma and the conditioning and the stuff. It's making us mean or upset or angry. And that's a journey. That's a journey of life. It's not something you're going to do in a one breakthrough session. Um, but yeah, I would concur that your attitude and your thoughts are creating your reality. And it's very, very clear who it's done in our service. And you just said something important about vibration. What does vibration do to the inner self? in terms of making these things positive and work. Does it, does it affect the brain or what 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 is the good vibration thing? I mean there's a great song by the Beach Boys, good vibration. Good vibration is there. You talk about anti media. I remember going to see that my mother was going to be taking us to see anti media. What did what did you what did you like this is a subject for us? What did you think of him as a kid? Yeah, I mean, he was in a show on the London West End stage, and it was just, it was, it was weird. I mean, it was fascinating, because he was only the leader in person, he went to his community. He was a genius, he was a genius, and I, I didn't get that when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A few years ago, I started doing some of the music, and this guy was good. But I used to remember seeing him on television shows, and it was his staccato, the way he sang, which uh, drove me crazy, but uh, he was good. I mean, I, I appreciate him. Now, unfortunately, he's not here to get my accolades, but uh, he, he was good. But anyways, back to vibrations. What is it doing to us to make these things work? Well, what Mm -hmm. um, so if you think that all of creation and the entire cosmos in multiple universes and dimensions and planes of existence are all different vibrations, and some of those vibrations are harmonious or in harmony, um, you can think about it being on the earth, in harmony with the human level, in harmony with nature, which is why we feel great when we go out in nature. And some of them are in alignment, if you like, with higher dimensional realities. Um, 
I believe that it's really not like a consciousness. It creates everything. And you get love isn't actually an emotion, it's a grand state of being, it's part of creation itself. So the new and then all the things that branch out of love, which would be things like compassion or kindness or gentleness or joy, which I would think of as love in action. Mm -hmm. All of those things, not, I don't really think of them as emotions, I think of them more as variances and facets of the grand state of being, which is love. And the more we get into alignment with those, and that is the highest, love is the highest vibration of all. So the more we get into alignment with that, it could be appreciation or gratitude or courage, but the more we get into alignment with those higher vibrations, we are connecting to something much, much bigger, but we're also feeling better within ourselves. So I think it has an impact on the cellular body with less illness, less disease, um, less inflammation. Um, the body works better. We know from acupuncture that it, we're actually energetic bodies. We know from heart mass. We know from many things that we're actually not just a physical thing. We look like we're just a physical thing with lots of different components to it. But actually there's a whole consciousness field around us. And that operates on a higher vibration <coughs> on a higher vibration if we're aligned with those higher vibrational um what well call them feelings for now but then I don't see them as that. Mm. And then all of what we say with maybe the unhelpful feelings or the negative feelings like being mean or upset right. fearful. Yeah. They are more coming yeah. from the identity. Yeah. So yeah. Think about it in the bone circle a lot is that we have to be parts of self. Oh, we have to create self which is our luminous creative spirit and soul that us. And then we have the smaller self, which is the conditioned self, the ego self, that got shaped by everything that happened to us. And the ego self, to me, is based on survival. It's the biggest thing of survival. So to think that survival, if something happens to you, you're going to fight, flight, or flee. Go to a free reaction. And so the fight is anger, flight is anxiety and fear, and free is where you give your power to something that you're going to take it to the So it ends up actually sinking into depression. That forms the core of the Enneagram which is the kind of structure of your small self. So when you're talking about vibration and how that's affecting you, the more you can get into alignment with the higher vibration, the better you will feel, but you also emanate that out. You're connecting to something better and you become into that whole cycle of life, which is why um, yeah, yeah. Dallenberger found when he took people to Las Vegas at the yeah. people that were up-tempo giving, um, yeah, we're winning more because they're in a vibration of a body and a spirit and a lot. They're in alignment with the creative source of everything that is. Which the people that are me, they're cutting it off. They're closing it down. And it's amazing how it affects the outcome of things. It, it, it's, it's bizarre, isn't it? It seems bizarre if you don't take a look at what's going on behind it. Right. But if we think that all of creation is coming from a vibration, um, coming from codings of light, coming from codings of language, this goes into the work of Dr. 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 Herthat in the Keys of Enoch, um, that everything is a vibration and the names of vibrations and then, you know, it went into the chance monthly, they're raising a vibration with those sacred names, they're connecting with the sacred power, and it's all in the field of consciousness, which is why consciousness is key. But we only see the physical, and we see, hey, you know, this is really weird. You know, if I think happy, then I win more at Las Vegas. But that's just the uh, result of being in alignment with something much greater. So yes, it does. We're we're part of the universe, and our participation is required. Yeah, I'll show you everything. I if we want I to will. use I these tools effectively in what I would call love teaching service, I do. the structure of love teaching service. It makes uh, you love, it you love it. It's true that we really are, we do it in service. Do. We usually do things for ourselves, but they end up being in service to others. So I'm so convinced that there's a lot of
Yeah, that's not really true. I have to protect you. Because I was a benefiting from that learning, as I said. So it's a beautiful synergy of love, truth, and service that we can go into. Yeah, that's not really true. It changes things when you're in that orientation because of the way that creation itself is set up. Because we're affecting it. We're affecting what actually gets manifested, if you like, or created through the things that we say to ourselves, the things we say to others, the, the attitudes that we have, um, what we focus on, what we vision, what we think about, what we feel about, what we talk about. And often people are not aware what they're actually talking about or, or focused on. They may think they're focused on something, but it's often the opposite. So for example, if they're going for that big job that they want and they're doing affirmations in the morning and they're focused on getting that job, they might find that if they actually sat in stillness and looked, they're actually focused on the fear of how the interview's going to go and their shortcomings, you know, and they're not good enough and will yeah, I get it and I don't think I will and I'm actually really anxious. I'm going to force myself to pretend that I'm being positive. That's often the dynamic. I'm just using that as a, as a, as a random no, example. But that's you're right. dynamic playing out. Yeah. And chances are they don't get the job if they think negatively about themselves. That's right. Right. It's like, it goes to all levels, eh? It does. Now, is the ego good or bad for you? Oh, uh, you know, I'm fired today with a question, you brilliant a question. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's either good or bad. I love that it says, Bill, it says nothing is good or bad, only thinking makes it so. And we used to say to clients in Holly Street, you know, a knife in the hands of a surgeon will save your life. In the hands of a madman, it will take your life. I think the ego is a bit like that. It can be good and it can be bad, depending on how you use it. It's just a tool. But the way I like to work um, when I teach in the bone circle is that the, and I have a great quote, by the way, that he absolutely comes in with this, and it's Einstein. And he says, the intuitive mind is a sacred bit, and the rational mind is a faithful servant. So we've created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the bit. Now, for me, the intuitive mind is part of your greater self, your luminous creative self. And the rational mind is part of your ego self that has to think it all through, that has to have know how and why and how I'm going to do this and I'm, whether I'm good enough or whether I've got enough power or if I'm doing it the right way and all these other things. So the ego, um, a, lot of, a lot of Eastern traditions about rising above the ego, but I don't teach that. I say, no, the ego is here. For you to That's a good point. Bridget, hold on. We're going to come back and talk a little bit more with you. Plus, we'll take phone calls on Coast to Coast AM. Find out more about tonight's guest. Log on to coasttocoastam.com. <laughs> Children five and up. 
Talk to your child's doctor. Or visit myturn.ca.gov to find a vaccine near you. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. We have a lot to celebrate this holiday season, but COVID-19 hasn't gone away. So let's make sure to keep our celebration safer by following these tips. Get vaccinated to protect loved ones and get a booster to keep your immunity strong. Wear a mask when it's to protect you and others. And if possible, keep gathering small, short, and outdoors if you're uncertain of everyone's vaccination status. Bring on the cheer safely this year. Find a vaccine near you at myturn.ca.gov. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. Nine out of ten of Santa's elves listen to KFI, and the one that doesn't isn't even a very good elf. So I already don't trust his judgment. KFI and KOSP HD2, Los Angeles, Orange County. It's time for your morning wake-up call. Here's Jennifer Jones Lee. that I saw on my drive from Rancho Cucamonga to Burbank this morning. They didn't actually witness the accident, but cars pointed the wrong direction, cars that hit run into the center divider, and most of all, this big rig at the 5-134 right here. Oh, dear. Apparently, that is making life a mess for anybody driving the 5 coming into Burbank this morning. We'll get more on that with Nick Pagliocchini, but the bottom line is the storm is the headline in Southern California today. Welcome to your wake-up call. Let's get more on it by going right to the National Weather Service. Meteorologist Rich Thompson joins us this morning. Rich, I know you guys have been telling us this was going to be the biggest storm of this season, but holy cannoli, I feel like it has gone above and beyond. It's definitely uh, off to a very good start this morning across L.A. with the rain moving in. Now, let's talk about what we can expect for it later today with this storm. Okay, the storm's going to roll through today, so we're going to have rain across L.A. County through the day today. Uh, rainfall totals were still expecting anywhere from 1 to 3 inches for coastal and valley areas, with up to 3 to 6 inches of rainfall in the foothill and mountain areas. Uh, in terms of snowfall, we are going to have right now kind of high snow levels. There's a lot of uh, warm, totally flow ahead of this rain right now. The snow levels right now are about 7,000 feet, but they're going to lower to the day-to-day -day about 5,500 feet, and then lower even more tonight down about 2,500, 3,000 feet. Uh, so, like, the resort levels, like, say, 6, 7,000 feet and the mountains can see anywhere from 1 to 3 feet of snowfall when it's all said and done. And then tonight, like at the grapevine level uh, on the I-5, it would be uh, maybe anywhere from 1 to 3 inches of snowfall this evening as the snow level drops. Okay, so that's sort of the word to people that if you're going to have to go over the, uh, the grapevine right now, probably do it sooner than later, it sounds like. Yes, do, do it today while it's still going to be falling as rain because tonight the snow level drops and make traveling uh, a lot more difficult. Won't be a lot of precipitation falling sets just to be enough to those lower snow levels to really cause some travel issues with people going back next to the woods. Okay, when it comes to the rainfall totals, are we right on track for what you guys were anticipating, or does this seem like more? I know this is pretty much what we're expecting in terms of rainfall totals. Our computer models have been very consistent with this forecast over the last several days, so we're very confident in our totals, and they're working out pretty well so far. Okay, good. And then as far as where this is going to put us in rainfall amounts for the normal time of this year? Mm -hmm. uh, well, when so this is all said and done, we'll definitely be above normal for this time of the year. It's hard to say how well above normal. They so definitely keep the final totals, but definitely when it's all said and done, we'll be ahead of the game for this winter. And which is incredible. I, it's hard to believe that one storm could take us from a deficit to actually a, a, you know, a bonus, I guess. Well, that's just the, uh, the joys of winter in Southern California in terms of rain. Uh, the joys of it. Exactly. So as far as this storm then tapering off, so it looks like it'll taper off then this evening, like you said. As for tomorrow, uh, can we expect it to be completely gone? Yeah, tomorrow will be dry. It's very cool, but very dry. No rain in the forecast tomorrow. Then there's a slight chance of rain on Thursday. The, if anything does fall, it'll be very, very light though on Thursday across LA County. Uh, then further out, uh, we're kind of keeping our eye on like the uh, next Wednesday, Thursday, the 22nd, 23rd time frame. Looks like the schedule for another more significant storm that time frame. So that's still way far out there, but let me see on our radar to look at. Okay, when it comes to the burn zones, before I let you go, how are we looking in some of those areas? 
Uh, well, for the burn areas, we do have a flash flood watch in effect until 6 p.m. this evening for the burn areas, because with these rainfall totals and rainfall rates we're seeing and expecting through the day, we do have potential for some minor mud and debris flows. That's why we have a flash flood watch in effect until 6 p.m. for those areas. So if you like uh, around the Palisade fire, the Bobcat, the dam, the ranch to the lake fire, those areas would be under that flash flood watch. All right. Thank you so much, Rich, for all of this information this morning. And stay safe because when you commute home today, wow, it is it's a, just a, a slow slog out there, that's for sure. Okay, I'm a five-minute drive to get home, so I'm good. <laughs> okay, good. Well, that means you don't get to listen to KFI for very long. No, I don't, unfortunately. <laughs> that's the bummer of the commute. All right, Rich, thanks so much. I appreciate it. All right, talk to you later. All right, see you later. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk with ABC's, uh, actually, Aaron Katursky, because remember how all eyes had been on New York because of, we were waiting for the Supreme Court to rule on the vaccine requirement for healthcare workers in New York? Well, they have ruled, and I bet a lot of healthcare workers who were hoping that things would be different in Southern California might not like the way that this New York ruling went. So that's coming up in just a second. But Nick Saliokini, I want to give all the time that you possibly need because, I, I mean, I can't even believe this to me at this point. This might have been one of the most dangerous in the terms of number of spin-outs and wrecks that I saw that I think I've ever seen living here. Yeah, I was going to say, I live about seven to nine minutes from the studio. And yes, there were three situations between home and here. So I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, no, it's... It's, I don't know what it is, just my biggest encouragement for you, just slow down and give yourself extra time wherever you're headed this morning. That is my biggest encouragement for you. We don't tell you what to do here on KFI, but we do encourage you to be safe out there and just give yourself a little extra time wherever you may be headed. So, uh, right now it's going to be a mess of the drive in the Pasadena area. On the east side of the 210 at Sierra Madre, uh, it looks like you have to crash like the full right lane shut down. You're squeezing by on the far left lane. This is a wreck involving a big rig, and that's going to be a rough ride for you as you are making your way at eastbound on the 210 continuing towards Sierra Madre. Ongoing problems for you in Inglewood, 405 north before uh, Florence. That's the crash of the two-right lane shut down. You'll see a rough go of it for the drive from from Century Boulevard. Uh, as you make way through the Westchester area, on the southbound side of the 405 at La Sierra, that's a uh, car fire that has uh, been cleared of the center divider, but that's the only good news here, because it's a rough ride for you either way. Okay, if I and Sky help get there faster, I'm Nick Collier, Chief. 506 on your wake-up call. Aaron Katursky, good morning to you. So a lot of California healthcare workers have been following what was going on in New York regarding hope, the hopeful halting from a lot of healthcare workers for the COVID-19 vaccine requirement, but it doesn't look like that went their way. No, it didn't. Uh, the Supreme Court, without comment, rejected the uh, the application of a handful of health workers who objected on religious grounds to getting the uh, the, the COVID-19 shot. Uh, the, the Supreme Court, uh, for the fifth time, in fact, turned down this kind of a challenge. There was a dissent in in uh, Justice Gorsuch, Alito, and Thomas that they would have taken up the petition uh, in order to perhaps protect religious freedom. But the uh, Supreme Court's not going to go there this time. Okay, and then a lot of, um, I guess a lot of the people who were arguing this case, a lot of the healthcare workers were saying, hey, so you're making us choose between our religion and our jobs. Now what do we do? Now what do they do? Well, in some cases, uh, they, they're no longer working. There is a, a, there is a process by which um, religious exemptions can be granted, but it's meant so that they're few and far between. Um, and, and in this particular uh, uh, case, the, it looks like about 37,000 health workers have left the field um, because of this mandate. So that's about 4% of, um, of the health workforce, I think, is, uh, is the percentage. It's a lot of people. And, uh, and, and the state has suffered as a result because there's a shortage of hospital beds. Okay, that's, that's, those were my two questions. So first off, then, what does that do to medical care? So right there you answered that one. But then, secondly, where are these people going? Well, we don't know. Uh, either uh, they're looking for other lines of work, or I, I'm, not, I'm just not sure. Uh, mm. But it, there's definitely been a consequence here. It's a, it happens to be a consequence that apparently the state is willing to live with. It's better to have your health worker vaccinated than put them out there caring for people and, uh, and having them be a, a potential risk. It, it can't be an easy calculus, um, and I'm not sure it was a foreseen outcome, but um, there, there's, there's been some resistance. Now, by, well, we should say, 
there's also been a lot more acceptance than, than there has been resistance. Yeah, you, the majority of the healthcare community has gotten the COVID-19 vaccines, but there is that handful of them that will not. But all this comes down on the day when it comes out that the U.S. recorded over 50 million <coughs> COVID cases, and I'm, I'm sure that had to weigh in a little bit into the judge's decision if it were to have come in before they made the decision. Well, look, I don't know if it would be um, 50 million cases for closing in on, what, 800,000 deaths, a lot of the deaths. The, um, the, the health experts there are preventable if only these people have been vaccinated. So it's, a, it's, it's really tough. Country's in a tough spot. Um, you know, and, and the, the number of vaccinated has gone up, uh, but, but, you know, it's sort of a slow creep, um, and, and there's still many holdouts. Now, we should say today is the, the is marked one year yes, yes. since the first vaccine dose was administered in the United States to a nurse in in, uh, in Queens uh, or Long Island. And, um, and and so you've had now had a year of of this vaccine to, to measure